Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make this very cool light wall animation in Apple Motion totally from scratch. This video was inspired by this Reddit user who wanted to know how to make a light wall animation like this in Apple Motion. So hopefully you see this video and it answers your question. All right, guys, let's just dive right into it. All right, we're just gonna start a new motion project here. This preset is 4K, 24 frames per second, and I'm going to give it a duration of 10 seconds. All right, the first thing I'm going to do in this project is to make it 3D. So let's go up to add object and select camera. And now our project is 3D. The next thing I'm going to do is build the background for our light wall. So let's head on over to library. Let's go to generators and let's select grid. I'm gonna drop this grid right into my project pane. Let's head on over to inspector and let's change the properties of this grid. I'm gonna make the line color a black and then I'm going to make the background color a very dark gray. I'm gonna set the feather value to one and the line width we're gonna make 24. The background width we're gonna make 34 and the background height we're gonna make 35. All right, that gives us a little bit of a texture in the background. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn off that grid because we don't need it quite yet. All right, now let's start building our lights. The first thing I'm going to do is head to the shape tools menu. I'm gonna grab a circle and I'm going to hold down my shift key as I draw a perfect circle here in my canvas. I've got my circle here and I'm going to head on over to properties and I'm going to reset the position parameter so that it's perfectly centered. Let's go back over to the shape tab. I'm gonna turn on the fill. I'm going to make the fill black and I'm going to turn off the outline. So now we have a black circle. All right, let's head back over to the project pane. I'm gonna right click and duplicate that circle. So now we have two versions of it, but this one I'm going to make look a little bit different. I'm going to turn off the fill and turn on the outline. Let's make this outline a very dark gray like that. So it's not quite black, but it's pretty dark. Let's change the width on this to 27. And now we're actually going to replicate that outline circle. So I'm gonna make sure I'm selected in my project pane, head up to the top right of the screen and hit the replicate button. Now let's head back over to the inspector and play with these parameters here. Under shape, I'm going to make it a line. And then I'm gonna head down to this line here, 3D, and I'm going to check that box. Now let's drop down the start and end points here. I'm going to make the start point on the X value zero and I'm gonna leave the other values also on zero. On the end point, I'm also going to make the X value zero, but we're going to make the Z position 300. And then we're going to make these points here instead of five, it's gonna go all the way up to 180. All right, now we're going to head back to our project pane and we're going to grab that circle that we replicated. So not the circle that's within our replicator with this little circle next to it, but this one here with the little shape tool icon next to it, we're gonna grab that. We're gonna head over to properties in our inspector window and we're going to add a drop shadow. I'm gonna hit the show button here to reveal this. And we're gonna leave just those parameters the same. So you can see that that gave our circle some depth. Let me turn off those overlays so you can see. Do you see that? No drop shadow, drop shadow. No drop shadow, drop shadow. That makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional. I'm gonna turn those overlays back on. All right, now we're going to add a new circle inside of this. So again, I'm gonna go back to my shape tool. I'm going to hit shift as I draw a new circle that's smaller inside our other circle. I'm going to head on over to properties. I'm gonna reset these parameters to make sure it's dead center. And back over on shape, we're gonna turn off the outline, turn on the fill. We're gonna change the fill mode from color to gradient. This is going to serve as our light bulb. I'm gonna drop down the gradient here so I can change the colors of these. This first color in our gradient, I'm going to switch to a very, very light gray. And then this darker blue, we're gonna switch to a darker gray. All right, now let's head down further in our style window under shape, and we're going to change the type from linear to radial. And we're gonna change the position of this little highlight that we've created. Let's just play with the X value here and the Y value on the start. And now on the end line, we're gonna play with that as well. 
My aim is to get a really soft looking gradient here. All right, so this is what's going to make up our lights when they're turned off. We've got the black circle background. We've got the replicated outline, so it looks really three dimensional. And then we've got this circle inside with the gradient. It kind of looks a little bit like a light bulb, which is the look that we're going for. So what I'm going to do is head over to my project pane. I'm going to select this inner circle. I'm gonna select the replicator. I'm gonna select the circle copy which is the circle that we replicated. And I'm going to select this black background. I'm going to right click and I'm going to group these together and I'm going to rename this group off light. And that's going to be really important to keeping us organized. I'm going to collapse this group then I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate it. And we're going to use this duplicated group as the basis for our light when it's turned on. So I'm going to rename this on light, keep us organized. And I'm going to turn off the off light in my project pane just so we can focus on the on light. And I'm going to expand this group so we can get in here and make some changes. I'm going to leave this black circle as it is. And I'm going to draw my attention to the circle copy. This is the one that we replicated. We're gonna make a little bit of a change to this. I'm going to select it in my project pane, head on over to properties and on the drop shadow, Let's change the color of this to kind of a brown. All right, now let's draw our attention to our bulb. We're gonna change the colors of this, so make sure you're selected on that bulb. Head on over to Shape, and on the gradient, we're going to make the lighter gray a pale yellow, and the darker gray a bit of a darker yellow. And then we wanna make this glow, so we're going to add a filter here. Head on up to Filters, we're gonna to go to glow and then we're going to select the glow filter and we're gonna pump up the radius in our inspector window all the way to 100. The opacity is gonna go all the way up to three. The threshold's going to go all the way down to zero and the softness, I'm gonna crank up to let's say 0.7. That looks good to me. Let's head back over to shape. Under style, let's crank up the feather on this a little bit as well. All right, before I show you how to make these on and off lights into that really cool light board, if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. All right, the secret to making that light board is replicators. Let's start with that off light. I'm going to mute the on light so we can focus on the off light. Let's turn on the off light. Select it here in my project pane. This is the entire group. We're going to head up to the top right of the screen and hit replicate. And then we're going to make some modifications to this in our inspector window under the replicator tab. We're gonna leave it on rectangle. We're going to leave it on tile fill, but we're going to change the size of this to 4,000. And we're going to change the number of columns to 13 and the number of rows, let's say to 13. And then we're going to head down to cell controls here and under scale, we're just gonna dial this down until these lights fit pretty comfortably. I'm gonna leave this at 20%. Now let's rename this group to stay organized. We're gonna call it Off Light Grid, and I'm gonna close it up. All right, well now let's head on over to our On Light. I'm going to turn it on to activate it. I'm gonna collapse the group, select it, and again, we're gonna hit the Replicator button, and we're gonna go over to the Inspector window, Again, we wanna match the settings exactly of our off light. So rectangle tile fill 4,000 on the size. Columns and rows will each be 13. And then on the scale, we're gonna make it 20%. I'm gonna rename that in my project pane. And we need to reorder things because our off lights are above our on lights, which is concealing them. There we go. And then the other thing that's happening is that our grid, remember the grid we built as our background is on top of everything. Let me activate it so you can see, remember that? So let's reorder everything in our project pane so we have everything in the order in which we want it. There you go. So now we've got our lights all turned on, we've got our grid background, and we've got our off lights underneath our on lights. So now how do we add that animation to the light board? There's a couple different ways to do it. I'm gonna show you both methods. The first one is to use a behavior. We're gonna drop down our on light grid to find the replicator. And we're going to head on up to behaviors, head over to replicator, and there's only one option there, sequence replicator, let's apply that. And then over here in our inspector window under behaviors, there is our sequence replicator. Under parameter, we're going to drop down add and select opacity. Then we're gonna turn the opacity all the way down to zero. 
Let me show you what we've got so far. The sequencing is set to two, the unit size is object, the spread is one, and it loops once over our 10 second project. I'm gonna run my playhead down my timeline and you can see what happens. The lights start blinking off right from the center and they stay off through the duration of our project. Let's make some changes here. I'm gonna change the sequencing from two to through. And let me show you what that does if we run our playhead. After the lights blink off, they turn back on and all the action happens just one time over the course of our 10 seconds. I'm gonna cue up my playhead more toward the middle of my timeline here. And let's play with the spread. Let's bring it up to five. That means that more lights will be turning on and off at once instead of just one at a time. So you get more of a clean ripple effect. But this action happens kind of slowly, doesn't it? It only happens once over 10 seconds. Let's change the number of loops to four. And now that action is happening faster, but what if we don't want it to originate from the center? We can change that as well. If we head over to the replicator tab, you can see here under the origin line, it's set to center, but if we set that to left, now the lights go this way. And you can change that direction on the diagonal. The sequence replicator works in a lot of different directions. Okay, but what if you wanted more of a star shape like the example on that Reddit post? Let me show you how to do something where it's more like shapes or letters. I'm going to turn off that sequence replicator and I'm going to head on over to the library. We're going to head on over to shapes and we're going to choose this five-sided star and I'm going to drop it at the top of my project pane. Now I'm going to head on over to inspector and change the parameters of this star. I'm going to turn off the fill and turn on the outline. I'm going to change the brush type from solid to airbrush. The width I'm going to dial all the way up to 100 and the spacing I'm going to change, I'm going to change this to 21%. Now we're going to keyframe the size of this star. So I'm going to make this star really only last one second in my project. And I'm going to make sure I'm selected on that star, head on over to properties in my inspector window. Let's add a keyframe on scale and make it zero. Now we're going to jump to the end of our one second star and let's change the scale so high that it's completely out of frame. Now what I'm going to do is take my light grid and I'm also going to make that just one second long. And then I'm going to make sure I'm selected on it, head on up to object and we're going to add an image mask. And in the well for the mask source, we're gonna drag from our project pane that five-sided star. And now the lights come on in a star pattern. Now, if we wanted that animation to loop, we can do that really easily using clone layers. So what you wanna do is select that on light grid, right click and select make clone layer. And now down here in our timeline, we have a clone layer of that star. I'm just going to bring it a little bit further down my timeline. So there's a little bit of overlap between the on light grid and this clone layer. And then we can just duplicate that clone layer as many times as we need to to fill our project. And then to make this look even cooler, I like to use that camera that we applied at the beginning. So I'm going to select that up in my project pane. Let's head on over to properties. I'm gonna drop down on rotation and rotate it a little bit on the Y axis. We're gonna dial down the scale so that the light board better fills our frame. I'm going to start my playhead at the beginning of the project, make a keyframe on the position line and then move my playhead further down in the timeline and play with that X value again. So it looks like the camera is just scanning over our light board as it flashes. So yeah, guys, that is how you make that light board effect to that Reddit user who posted this question. Thank you so much for the inspiration. I really hope that I helped you out. If you guys like this video, let me know. Give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos I know you're gonna love. I'll see you again.